John R. Rogers High School, home of the Pirates for over seven decades. A rich history of academic excellence, outstanding athletic achievement, accomplishment in drama, music, debate, hard-working students who have become exceptional adults, and outstanding support by an entire community that calls Rogers its heartbeat. This is the legacy of John R. Rogers High School. As the new millennium began, after years of growth and wear and tear, the Rogers Building needed a complete overhaul. Students needed a learning environment that would carry them into the future. At the same time, the rich legacy of Rogers demanded that its treasured Art Deco building be preserved. This was the challenge of the Rogers renovation. The Spokane community has a long history of supporting Spokane Public Schools and ensuring its children have safe, secure, and well-maintained schools in which to learn and grow. In March of 2003, the citizens of Spokane once again stepped up to the plate and voted for a $168 million district-wide improvement bond. This bond investment provided for the renovation of three elementary schools and modernization of two high schools, including the historic John R. Rogers High School in Northeast Spokane. The Board of Directors of Spokane Public Schools adopted a 25-year plan for bond proposals in, in construction of our schools in 2002. And so this dedication here at Rogers now is a culmination of the first six years of that 25-year plan. And it's an opportunity to celebrate the work that's gone on in the development of this beautiful learning space and to thank our voters for their commitment to Spokane Public Schools and to this Rogers community. The school is named for the popular third governor of Washington State, who promoted stronger support for public schools and free textbooks for all children. Rogers has deep roots in the Hilliard community, dating back to 1930, the beginning of the Great Depression, when Spokane citizens saw the need to replace the old Hilliard High School. Until September of 1924, Hilliard, a booming community of 4,000 in northeast Spokane, had been a separate city. It is named after Jim Hill, the founder of the Great Northern Railroad. On September 24, 1924, the cities of Spokane and Hilliard became one, giving citizens of both communities reasons to celebrate. Now they would receive additional business and property tax revenues, access to railroad commerce, as well as enhanced services. Almost immediately, the Spokane School Board saw a need for a new high school in the area. Hilliard High School, located next to the original Arlington Elementary School on the corner of Everett and Regal Avenue, had had its share of growing pains before becoming part of the Spokane School District. Citizens of Hilliard were asked in 1912 and 1921 for funds to expand Hilliard High to accommodate the growing population of high school students in the community. A series of modifications were made to the site, including adding annexes and portables. A decision was made to place a construction bond before the voters for the building of a new school. The stock market had crashed just months earlier. Despite glum economic and labor news, the residents of Spokane passed the $400,000 measure, beginning a tradition of committed support that has continued to this day. With the new funding, the school board awarded the design and planning of the new school to Dow and Wells Architects in 1930. Soon after, parcels and properties along Wellesley and Pittsburgh were purchased by the district. The foresight of the community was fully realized on the afternoon of Saturday, January 31, 1931, when a fire broke out at the aging Hilliard High School. Faulty wiring was eventually blamed for the blaze, which destroyed some nine classrooms the need for a new high school in Northeast Spokane had never been greater. With little fanfare, construction began in the spring of 1931 on what was to be the most modern high school in the area. Innovations included all-electric home economics kitchens and a professional stage and auditorium with state-of-the-art light controls. The first principal, J.D. Meyer, 
had the privilege of using the first building-wide public address system in the city of Spokane. Back from a midterm break, more than 1,000 students attended the first day of class in the new school on February 1st, 1932. It didn't take long for Rogers to outgrow its 30 new classrooms, and by the end of the decade, blueprints were on the table for new additions to extend the wings on the east and west sides. North Spokane continued to grow, with GIs back from World War II and homes made affordable through VA loans. Houses began to spring up on side streets like Heroy, Morton, Hoffman, and Wabash, where empty lots once hosted pickup baseball games. The first decades of any new school set the tone and customs for students, staff, and community to follow through the ages. Rogers soon developed its own rich traditions, a reputation as a sports powerhouse with city championships and records in football, track, and baseball. Excellent drama and music programs, popular with students and the community, and rigorous academic offerings, setting a tradition of high standards that would propel students to their full potential. The teachers were excellent here. I have two graduate degrees, and I'll put these teachers up against any of uh, any institution or teachers that I've been exposed to. To have teachers say, okay, if you want to do that, it's fine, but I expect more of you because you're in my classroom and I know you're capable. That means a lot. I loved all of them. They were just, in fact, that's how I got so involved in Rogers after I got out was because I wanted to put back what I got out. They were good to me and I know I wouldn't be here today where I am if it wasn't for Rogers. They never let us believe that we were anything other than a group of very talented individuals coming to be educated. The baby boom generations that made up the pirate classes of the 50s and 60s realized early on that being from John R. meant being part of something big. There were not only teachers, administrators, and coaches who expected more of you, but neighbors and business people were often classmates, family, friends, or relatives. If you look at the Walk of Fame, look at all of those extremely successful people. They all came out of Rogers. And why? Because they were given the perspective that they could achieve and do anything that they wanted to. I think part of it is because we've had this long, I'll call it rich tradition. It's a case that uh, everybody kind of pulls for each other. As I keep repeating, Rogers just wasn't a structure, an educational structure. It was, it was that shining light on the, on the, on the hill. Uh, and has continued to be. The sense of family that came from the community of Hilliard and Northeast Spokane would create lifelong friendships like no other institution in Spokane. It continues to this day with the region's strongest and most active alumni association. We have an alumni organization that, ho that has about 30,000 people in the database. They came together and really wanted to to erect a monument in honor of alumni of Rogers High School. So our Wall of Remembrance is a place where folks could purchase a brick with their name and the year they graduated. And there's multiple decades dating all the way back to actually Hilliard High School. And folks purchase bricks and we had a big unveiling of that last summer. And it was really profound to watch the folks go up to the wall, find their brick, take pictures by their brick, be with their brick. And it's in the Pirate's Cove, which is a beautiful new courtyard here at school. By 1950, Rogers student enrollment had grown from 1,000 in 1932 to almost 1,500 students. The baby boom showed no signs of letting up. And soon, both Rogers and North Central were at capacity with students being housed in temporary or portable classrooms. The first major addition to Rogers was the 1958 expansion that included a new cafeteria, field house, and art and home economics wing. The $600,000 budget allowed the old cafeteria to be remodeled into additional classrooms and a study hall. The new field house gymnasium would host many events over the next 50 years. In 1982, a new industrial arts and social studies wing was added to the east side of the school along Pittsburgh. 
Additional work was completed in 1999. Passage of the 2003 school improvement bond by Spokane voters provided for the largest, most comprehensive modernization in 50 years. The challenge was daunting. To marry the historic 1932 building and its recent additions with a new state-of-the-art structure, all while students attended classes. NAC Architecture and Garco Construction, both of Spokane, were chosen to design and construct the project. Using a relatively new process for school projects in the state, the contractor was chosen early on to assist and advise on systems, materials, and logistics throughout the design process. We definitely had an idea of what it should be going into it because of the historic nature of the 1932 building and the Art Deco style. So, so definitely we had some ideas uh, on what the finished product from the exterior would be and how it should present itself. And, and what we said to ourselves going into it is what we would call contemporary compatible. In other words, it's a contemporary high school that, that's built for the 21st century, but it needs to be compatible with the 1932 building without, without copying it. NEC's architects and designers began a series of meetings with district and school staff, alumni, and community members to bring form to how a new John R. Rogers would look. We had a committee that included staff, students, alumni, and the committee was about 30 plus people large. And so when we got together to talk about our dream list, our dream building, what would it look like, that whole group had input. I think one of my favorite things about the Rogers Project probably was the community involvement and, uh, and, and uh, not being afraid to propose some, some big moves that, that would make Rogers stand apart and make it a special place. The signature element of that clock tower, that came through the different renditions of the building we saw over and over again. That hit on a, on a rendition and we never let it go. So it's really the signature of the whole entire project is that clock tower. And uh, one of the alumni talked about that being a beacon, that Rogers High School, John R. Rogers for him was a beacon of hope. And that once we all saw that clock tower, there was no letting go of that clock tower. And, and we felt passionate about that as a group. On June 13, 2006, then Spokane School Superintendent Dr. Brian Benzel and Principal Carol Meyer, along with representatives of the school board, Rogers staff, alumni associations, and students, turned the first shovels of dirt and broke ground in a short ceremony. So began the three-year process that would consume the site with equipment and construction. The pack it up and move it scene would be replayed several times over the course of the entire modernization as the project was broken into three major phases. First up was the demolition of the old field house, gymnasium, and tennis courts, which would make room for a new main gym, an auxiliary gym, and a portion of the new commons and music classrooms. While displacing gym events, practices, and fitness classes for a year, the arrangement allowed a majority of students to stay on campus and move freely between the labyrinth of portables, annexes, and the original 1932 building. We were actually here on campus the entire construction project and it went in three phases and so we stayed just ahead of each construction phase as a staff and um, all of our students during that time. For example, our PE program had to actually be off campus and students bused. We were on a three period day for an entire school year and our PE teachers took 900 bus rides that year with their students. Arriving for class in September of 2007, students and staff were greeted by a spacious new athletic facility which would carry on the tradition of providing exciting competition and healthy lifestyle education well into the 21st century. The new main event gym kept the name of legendary Rogers teacher and coach, Carl Tuffy Ellingson. Students enjoyed bright sunny views from the new larger commons. Its wall of glass faces a newly designed Pirate's Cove and provides a view of acclaimed artist David Govedere's metal sculpture, Spirit of the Great Northwest. 
the sculpture was commissioned as part of Washington State's Art in Public Places program. The common space doubles as a cafeteria and provides an additional performance space for the school and the community. We really looked at trying to create flexible space. So space that would grow with education changes and also with technology changes. Probably the most impressive part of this latest phase is the new library on the second floor with incredible panoramas of Beacon Hill and Mount Spokane. The area provides a warm, inviting place for students to study and research. Phase two also opened the administration wing of the school, as well as several general education spaces that gave students a glimpse of the technology and craftsmanship that would be a part of all classrooms at Rogers. First and foremost, the space is for kids, and the students really need to have a voice in that. And as with our project, we did have student voice in this project, which I'm really proud of. And uh, secondly, I think creating spaces that are flexible, uh, are capable of growing with the changes in education and technology, and uh, spaces that kids and staff will really love to come to every day. The new year also brought the beginning of renovations on the 1932 building. Early in the design process, it became clear that the exterior of this classic building would be restored and preserved. The Art Deco look had made it the signature piece of architecture in Northeast Spokane for over 70 years. This structure was essential to the legacy of Rogers. The existing building, the 1932 building, had a, a historic presence. It was built uh, near the end of the Depression, a uh, very difficult time, an amazing time that, uh, uh, that the community back in that, uh, in that era understood the importance of the education for this area. So it was very important from a design standpoint that we kept that feel. Careful consideration was given to materials and methods used in reconstruction to maintain the historic character and integrity of the building. You really don't realize the complete shift in the building until you get over on the corner of Pittsburgh and Wellesley. And then you see this massive back part of this building that actually blends pretty flawlessly. Officials plan to apply for Rogers to be placed on the National Historic Register after completion of the project. The interior was a different story. Many of the spaces had been remodeled over the years to meet changing program needs, and the majority of any historic features had long since been removed. The exceptions were the classic tile entryway and the theater. Both these spaces held special memories to thousands of Rogers students, and they had already been carefully renovated in 1999. With those two areas protected, crews demolished the interior spaces and started fresh updating electrical, mechanical, technology, and safety to the standards of a modern high school. The relocation of the public offices to the east side of the new addition allowed the new classrooms on the Wellesley side to be filled with sunlight streaming in through the large, historically recreated windows that are one of the signature pieces of John R. Rogers. This, this is a 32 building. I mean, you know, 1932. And the way they enhanced it, it, it sparkles, it's radiant. What I was amazed at is how they've uh, taken the inside and just it just flows. What amazes me is the construction of it. It's almost seamless. People that went to school here, they probably can tell where the old school was and where the new school starts. But for the most part, it's seamless and it's wonderful. Most people who walk in feel like they're on a small college campus. And it really has to do with all the technology that we have in our building and all the things that our students have access to now that they didn't in the past. But the idea that they could take something that was old and keep that around just to maintain that history and then build off the back of that and uh, hopefully create some new memories for kids. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And I think it's really neat that they've kept the integrity of the school while at the same time improving it so amazingly. It's, it's really gorgeous. The kids are really lucky to have this space. That the public can see that, I think, makes that my most favorite part, just because it's, it's out there for the whole community, not just the Hilliard community, but the entire you know Spokane or surrounding area to come in and view sporting events and see what uh, Rogers is about. 
Some of the materials and methods to build a landmark piece of architecture have changed, but the spirit of tradition and the sense of family that each graduating class brings with it, fortifying the foundation, will last for generations to come. <laughs>